and welcome to Trade Compass, the news program of the International Trade Center. This special edition focuses on technology, women, and youth. I'm Susanna Pock in Geneva. With a shrinking global job market, women and youth are often hit the hardest. So what will it take to change this? Technology is one tool that can help women rise to the top. Our world is increasingly interconnected and 90% of formal jobs require tech skills. For a look at teens in tech, we turn to our youth reporter, Andy DeMeisen. Andy? Let's erase gender stereotypes starting today. Why do so many of us think that women can't become video game developers or even engineers? I'm here today at the CERN, birthplace of the internet, to figure out how leaders in technology start young. Why do you feel like interning at CERN? Well, the intern is uh, to see what we want to do later, and I like science, so I was trying to figure out what science I wanted to do. What do you think your dream job would be in about 10 years? Um, well, like I said before, I don't really know what I want to do. I know I want to do science, but I'm not sure really what type of science, so here I'm trying out physics. Technology isn't going to be the same in the future, so it's good to have an idea now, but it's going to change. My name is uh, Daphne Bavillier. I am a cognitive neuroscientist. I work at the University of Geneva in Switzerland, and I am the mom of Anaya Pouget. There are brain scientists like me that are beginning to understand what are the good ingredients in games to promote uh, positive effects. That's what I'm going to call the broccoli side of the equation. There is an entertainment software industry that's a chocolate. The issue is we need to put the two together. Who really wants to eat chocolate-covered broccoli? And you probably have had that feeling, right? Picking up an education game and sort of feeling, mm, you know, it's not really fun, it's not really engaging. So what we need is really a new brand of chocolate. We are thinking a lot about how to raise the awareness of girls about their capacities. We're actually thinking about how can we make video games that would introduce children to their brain, but also give them the knowledge to understand they are in control of their brains. We are working against a social barrier, educational barrier, cultural barrier. The main issue I see with girls is really a issue of self-confidence. They are very, very good in school. They're actually doing better than our boys, but they don't have the confidence to keep going. We need to support that greater uh, investment in what they are doing early on so that it translates later on. Our aim is to inspire these girls at a very uh, tender age, 11 to 14, where um, they could at any time be instructed to go into subjects that may be pertaining more to what would be suitable when they're older. It's possible to go into science and technology, even if there are only one or two girls in the class. When it comes to working in technology, being young can be a deciding factor in success. For example, take this young Kenyan who developed an app that helps connect women in business and even won an award for it. The winner of this uh, tech challenge is Catherine Niau and Greenbell Communications. It's a great opportunity and I'd wish this opportunity on any woman or any other person in the world. It has opened doors for me, it has uh, built my confidence and I am looking forward to great interactions with people across the world. Works just like a hangout, G chat, where you can talk to any business woman. We are trying to give the woman an upper hand in business and visibility and be able to trade globally and also locally. It's incredibly important to focus on technology for women in business. And that's because that's the future of the economy. Business uh, is increasingly uh, interconnected. We decided to create the She Trades app that we have on web and uh, mobile. Apps are a rapidly growing industry. There are as many mobile subscriptions as people on the planet. My generation uses phones for everything from games to music to social media. Social media doesn't care about 
how small you are. It cares about how interesting or how valuable your idea is. Social media gives small businesses a fair chance to define themselves in the world, and from there to scale up. For one Syrian businesswoman, social media and e-commerce are helping her to sell handcrafted jewelry, scarves, and bags, and to provide jobs for displaced women in Damascus. If we didn't have access to all the social media and everything, nobody would know about us. Our greatest strength is social media. Designer Rania Kinj puts the social in social media. Whether it's through her website, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Pinterest, she gets the word out about her company. And it's paid off. The first time she shared a photo of one of her bracelets on Facebook, it led to 15,000 orders for bracelets. And that led to more work opportunities for displaced women living in shelters. I would donate my know-how to teach them how to do handwork so they can slowly get out of the shelters. Syria's uh, local economy is based on crafts. I thought I would tap into this so I could reposition Syria on the international scene. To tap new markets and expand her online business, Kinch displayed Syrian products at a pop-up store at the United Nations in Geneva. Web marketing is reaching to a certain limit. And we notice that when we do something physically on the ground, it resonates much stronger on the social media and online. So by doing these small physical events, we accelerate this, this cycle for the sales to pick up. Pop-up stores are a new marketing approach that e-commerce giants use to pique the interest of consumers. The pop-up store, which ITC calls an e com souk, is part of the technical support it offers to small businesses. eBay is actually uh, doing pop-up stores, and also Amazon is doing that. Etsy.com, which also started online, are, are going physical. When small businesses tap different types of technology, from social media to e-payments and e-commerce, they have a fighting chance in a competitive business world. Knowledge is power. When it comes to women finding success in science, technology, engineering, and math, it pays to start early by investing in girls' education and supporting them in the workplace. In fact, reducing the dropout rate of women in these fields by 25% can add hundreds of thousands of people to the talent pool. And the economic benefits are many. Women entrepreneurs start with a fraction of the funding that men start with and still bring in higher revenues. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the International Trade Center's Trade Compass. I'm Susanna Pock in Geneva. See you again soon.